Old Snee Lock. Welcome to another episode of Old Snee Lock's Workshop. One handle fitted. Right handed. Feels good. All I got to do now is drive the wedges in. I have the wedges driven into the handle and it's locked up pretty well. I just need to cut off this extra material. On the other ones, I've filed this off flush, and I thought I'd leave this one a little proud, just kind of a decorative effect. I'm taking the chisel and I'm cutting a slight chamfer on the outside of the handle. Kind of prevents splintering. This isn't good on the chisel, but this isn't a great chisel. Takes a pretty good edge. This is the kind you carry in your tool pouch to do those jobs that you really don't want to get your good ones out for. And it feels right. But this one has the same problem that most handles have. They've varnished it. So I'm going to remove the varnish and put some boiled linseed oil on it because that's my favorite thing to put on a handle. Now there may be better materials for finish a handle with, but I haven't found them. Varnish is just kind of sticky. It tends to raise a blister on my hand after I've been working because, hear that? That's it rubbing on my, on my hand as it's, 
as I'm using the hatchet. That's it, varnish rubbing on my hand, and it raises a blister right about there. I've tried lots of things getting varnish off, but this scraper seems to do the best job. off the varnish without taking a whole lot of wood and it doesn't make a bunch of dust. I've used sandpaper and you've seen me use sandpaper on a lot of things but I have a problem. I have an allergy to dust so I end up having to wear a respirator in order to work with anything that involves a lot of sanding. And rather than spend a day coughing and having my nose bleed. Using this scraper, this seems to work really, really well. I noticed when I put the handle in that the handle had a bit of a twist to it. So the head, when I was holding it in my hand, like this, in a normal striking position, the head was twisted off that direction. What I'm doing is thinning out this section and this section of the hatchet handle just a little bit so it rotates that head in my hand. Now with the varnish off of there, you don't hear that squeak. That's why I take it off. This little bit here on the handle, I'm going to use sandpaper on. It's cross grain and it's being ornery. I 
Now we just shake up the min well linseed oil. And put it on the bark. Not shiny when I first put it on, but it soon dulls out as it soaks in. And I can put multiple coats on it, but I found that only one or two is more than enough. It gives it the protection that I want to give it, and it doesn't build up a coating. It doesn't build up a finish on it, which keeps it from acting like a varnish. And it goes on the steel just as well as it goes on the wood. The end grain really sucks it up too. This rag will get hung outside to dry because I don't like having any rags down in here in the basement with boiled linseed oil on them because it oxidizes. As I've said before, it'll catch fire or spontaneous combustion. It's really a bad idea to do that in your basement. So I'll take this out in the backyard and hang it up to dry. When it's dry, it can be tossed. So now I have a Buell hand axe, carpenter's axe, carpenter's hatchet, whatever you want to call it, all completed. The only thing I need to do now is sharpen it. When the boiled linseed oil is dried on it, tomorrow morning I'm going to take it and run it over the top of the stones, see if I can't get a nice shine on it. This is a hatchet that I really want to have a razor sharp edge on. It's used more like a slick than as a hatchet for chopping away. This is more for shaving off material. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments below. You know, I read them all. Thanks for watching. And I wear gloves so I don't get boiled linseed oil on my hands. It tends to dry them out and causes them to crack.